sit right back and take it easy. Hello and welcome to my very first review. Before getting into the review itself, I thought I'd start off with a bit of an introduction. In this series, I'll be trying to keep reviews short. Between a minute 30 and 3 minutes for the ones I have a bit more to say about. I'm going to avoid playing any music of any sort to steer clear of the copyright BS that's been going around YouTube lately. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And lastly, if you're expecting me to do reviews of crap like Sword Art Online or Naruto or Attack on Titan, then I think you came to the wrong place. There's countless other people out there doing that exact sort of thing, so I'm probably not going to be doing anything like that anytime soon. Alright, so on to the review itself. I decided to go with Air for the first review because it's a series which is kind of special to me. It's the second of three key visual novels that have been adapted by Kyoto Animation into anime form. And while it's not as popular as Clonad or even as good as I thought Canon was, it's still a series that has some charm to it and I feel deserves a bit of recognition. If nothing else, it's unique in that very little of the show actually takes place in or around a school, in spite of the three main characters attending said school. I shouldn't have to explain how unusual it is for anime to not be centered around school life. The other unique thing about this is that the main character is actually a drifter, not something you see too often in these type of shows. I can't say that I care much for the character since he's honestly a bit of a douchebag, to say the least. It's interesting nevertheless to see them go in the direction that they did and try something different. As with most key works, the characters are rather memorable and interesting for the most part. Except for Kana, who is honestly a bit uh, forgettable. I will say though that the plot does get a little weird near the end. I'm sure a lot of people watching it probably won't understand what's going on too well. Hell, I've seen the anime multiple times, I've gone through the VN, the manga, I've even read up a little bit on the series and I'm still a little unclear on it myself. It's a little hard to talk about the story without going into spoiler territory. Basically, you got this drifter who wanders into town looking for some girl his mom told him about and doesn't really have much to go off of. He encounters the other characters of his story and eventually starts to think that they might be the person he's looking for. This while learning about their lives and helping out with their various problems. And did I mention this guy has the ability to manipulate an old ugly doll with his mind? Yeah, they don't really explain that one too well. From what I gather, it's something he learned from his mother who ran a traveling puppet show, but even then he's not too good at it. The main focus is around a character named Mizuzu, or something of that nature. I'm honestly not too good with the pronunciation. They're a character that I feel many viewers could probably relate to as they have an inability to hold down relationships of any sort with the people around them and seem to drive most people away. I believe this is probably what drives them to the protagonist as they probably view him as a fresh start, a clean slate to start over again with. And then there's Kano, who is probably the most forgettable character I've seen in any key work. There's nothing necessarily wrong with them. They're just very bland and generic in both character design and personality, and even their backstory is a bit weak. There's not really much to say about them, and their part in the story feels a little like filler. And finally, you have Minagi, who is uh, just incredible. Truly magnificent and wonderful and fantastic and lovely in every possible way. Oh, um, where was I? Right there. Um, would I recommend it? Well, to that I say if you're looking for something romantic and tragic, and this would certainly fit that bill, and would be worth checking out. It's only 15 EP with the OVA included, and doesn't feel nearly as rushed as other key-inspired anime of the same length, such as Angel Beats or, uh, Charlotte, uh, Char whatever. I'd also highly recommend watching those OVA episodes where they take place in the story, which is between episodes 8 and 9 of the TV series. While most OVA have very little impact on the story of the anime that they originate from, in this particular case, it really helps in establishing some of the characters and the overall backstory as well as adding some extra weight to the events of the anime. Just be sure to avoid the movie adaptation of the series. It's complete garbage, and it would take me far too long to explain why that is to fit into this video. Well, I think at this point I've said just about everything there is to say about Air. Although I did forget to mention that it's got a pretty great opening song, which unfortunately I can't play here. You've also got some very good art and animation in my opinion. I actually think it's a bit of a shame they don't use that art style anymore, even if some people like to make fun of it these days. I actually think it's got uh, quite a bit of a charm to it, all jokes aside. Well, I guess that'll do it for this review. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and at the start of this video I said air was very special to me. If you're wondering why that is, well, let me show you. 
I think this will sum it up pretty well. And with that, you're welcome to subscribe or whatever. Doesn't really make much of a difference to me. I can't even say for sure if I'll keep this series going.